All right, guys, today we are gonna talk about the scale and weighing yourself. This almost should be two topics, one for guys and one for girls, but I'm gonna mash them together because each gender has pretty opposite views and relationships with the scale, but the same logic applies to both. So the first question and first point is to ask yourself if you can view the number on the scale objectively. So can you see it as something that's just a number, an indicator, one out of many metrics that will tell you how what's going on with your body. It's only one. It's not the only one. It's not the end-all be-all. It's not the most important one even. So can you view that number objectively? Many people cannot, especially girls. So if you can't do it, and what I mean by cannot is you associate emotion to what that number is. It's not an emotional experience to weigh yourself. It should be very objective. But a lot of people, that number means a lot to them emotionally. And like I said, and most of the time that's females. I know what happens in my household. I love to weigh myself. I weigh myself all the time. I, I find it really interesting. I like to know what I weigh after I eat, before I go to bed, when I wake up, after I train. You know, it's like a science experiment for me. My wife, Tana, on the other hand, will not weigh herself. She'll wake up in the morning or I'll wake her up before I go, if I leave before she's up, and she'll go into the scale, she goes to the bathroom first, and then I'll read the number without her seeing it. And either I'm helping her, or I'll send that number over to her trainer, Kim Odo, and he'll make adjustments based on that. Because she knows she can't do it objectively. So ask yourself that first, can I do it objectively? One thing to consider, again, this is more for the girls, um, weight gain can be positive. The scale's gonna move all the time, um, but going up in weight isn't always a bad thing. Now guys, we tend to like it, sometimes too much. Going up in weight sometimes isn't a good thing either. I've gained 20 pounds and I'm just getting leaner and leaner. No, you're not. Um, so don't be afraid, if, but I'm mainly talking about this topic for the girls. Don't be afraid if the weight goes up. It can be for a lot of good reasons. Uh, maybe you're, you've added on muscle mass. The muscle mass might just be fuller. Maybe you're finally eating enough calories that you're holding some water in the muscle that's very, very good for you, good for your training, good for your health. Um, and that can make the scale go up. There's a lot of different reasons the scale can go up and not all of them are bad. So don't be afraid if the scale goes up. And sometimes for the scale to go down in a long-term way, the scale's gotta go up first. So that's one thing I always have a challenge with clients. Sometimes they come from maybe a very low calorie diet or their metabolism is very bad and they're not eating very much. And the first thing we do is get those calories up to where they should be. Well, if you've been eating 1,000 calories and you go to 2,000, what do you think the scale's gonna do? It's gonna go up. But it's gonna go up with the intent of coming back down for a long-term, sustainable way. Sure, you could go from 1,100 calories down to 900. That's horrible for you, though. You're better off to, to ride it up and just be brave, stick it out, and you'll have long-term lifestyle management of your weight. Um, another thing about the scale, fluctuations are very normal. A lot of times I'll have clients weigh themselves over a three day period and send me the average. There's so many different things that can affect your weight. It's, it's almost impossible to manage all of them. Uh, sleep is a very big one. Uh, salt intake is also a very big one. Um, if you've been traveling, what you ate, how much the weather outside, if you sweated a lot, or um, if it's cold and you didn't sweat any and you're used to being sweaty, um, there's all kinds of stuff that can affect it. So fluctuations happen. So weigh yourself a couple times um, and, and take the average, which is the next point. When to weigh yourself. This is a common question and important if you really want to get an apples to apples comparison. So the most consistent time to weigh yourself is after a full night's rest. Generally, a lot of things stabilize themselves. You, you're asleep for six to eight hours. Um, you're always asleep six to eight hours. Unless, you know, there's, there's not a lot of, that consistency won't happen in much else of the day. Um, go to the bathroom, get on the scale. That's the best way to get the most consistent weight. Um, if you like to weigh yourself at night, that's one thing I like to do, is to know my night, my morning weight. Um, just know that if you're on a more high carbohydrate diet, when you weigh yourself at night, your weight gain through the day will be pretty substantial. If you're on a low carb diet, you're only gonna gain a few pounds through the day. 
And that's mainly due to fullness and muscle glycogen and water held within the muscle. It's not a bad thing. So just remember if you're weighing at night, you're very diet and um, fluid dependent. And it's kind of cool to see if for those of you that, you know, it is a science experiment to you as well and you can view it objectively to know what they call your float weight, which is what you drop from the nighttime to the morning, um, can be a pretty interesting thing to know. Lastly, there's so many numbers that you can measure uh, that, that will paint a bigger picture than just the scale. So again, it's one metric of many. Uh, body fat percentage is far more indicative of your progress. Lean muscle weight, a way better metric to measure. Weight is one of many metrics. So don't put too much focus on it and you'll be good. It, enjoy the scale, it's not scary, it's not mean. It's, it's one, one window into your progress.